And good evening, everybody. This is Vinny Maletti from Maletti Law, the strongest name in the law. The day now is Thursday, December 9th, 2021. The time now is 8.15 p.m. It is another long night here at the home office of Maletti Law. Um, obviously, things a lot of things going on, so this is a video, a little training video, a little guide for everybody. Uh, first and foremost, please, if you like the content, I always would like you to subscribe to the channel. There's a little red, bo a little red box below. Click on it, subscribe. You get a lot of good stuff, a lot of good content. You know, we post stuff almost every day right now at this point. So certainly, you know, certainly keep up and keep us uh, interested in providing more content by subscribing. Second, go to the website, www.maledilaw.com, www.maledilaw.com and sign up to the newsletter. Uh, that's also another critical way that you could uh, always get updates every single day, know what's going on, staying in the know. Again, we always provide uh, tons of content almost daily at this point. Um, so, you know, no matter how busy we are, we always provide some Something. So basically, the rule is every time we go through something internally, every time we work out something, we always like to share with you whatever we think is helpful. So today is actually a very, um, today's an interesting uh, topic, going to be very quickly. So this is going to be Compensatory Damages 101, or otherwise a guide to emotional distress. Compensatory Damages 101 a guide to emotional distress. So where does this come up? So everybody obviously has um, lately what's hot now is what? Religious exemptions, right? Religious exemptions, medical exemptions, um, discrimination claims, employment law is always hot. You got a lot going on obviously with the nurses, with the NYPD, with the fire department, always have a lot going on. So Title VII is big. Title VII is the Civil Rights Act. Title VII is the federal statute. Um, generally speaking, where does that come up? It's because when you're suing a state you know, you sue them in federal court, it's federal jurisdiction, you use a federal statute, Title VII with the EEOC. So one of the elements of damages, so damages are, you go to trial, let's just say, and you win money, right? So they award damages, the judgment awards damages, the judge awards damages. So there's a lot of different types of damages, right? So um, generally speaking, in Title VII cases, they come in three categories, right? Three broad categories. They come in economic damages, compensatory damages or otherwise known as non-economic and then punitive damages okay so the big three in title seven cases are economic non-economic and punitive economic are going to be back pay front pay some kind of prejudgment interest some kind of interest or something we're not going to go into that i only want to keep this um related to the emotional distress component the compensatory non-economic damages because this comes up a lot because um you know it's a lot of key words and when it comes to the law it's you have these like little hot keywords right but they all mean something they all have to be followed in the cases so i just kind of want to go through that a little bit but the third element like we mentioned is punitive damages um punitive damages is based on the moral judgment by the courts if uh, party's behavior is bad <clears throat> or egregious or something in the court wants to make a ruling make a, a big issue of them court might award punitive damages so <clears throat> excuse me so we're talking about emotional distress at this point we're talking about um, uh, compensatory damages non-economic damages so there's three levels okay so you go to trial you win your trial you have title seven you know title seven case you do very well there are three levels of damages. There's level one, level two, and level three. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm coughing a lot. I seem to have something in my throat. Now would be a great time to get it while I'm on video because I'm not making this twice. Because expert, I am no amateur. I do not make videos twice. I make videos once. So three levels. Level one, level two, level three. So level one is your lowest level. That's your garden variety. This is when the evidence presented at trial is limited to the testimony of the plaintiff. Plaintiff says that the plaintiff suffered emotional distress. Hey, what kind of emotional, you know, well, what's, your, what's your emotional stress? What'd you suffer? Plaintiff just testifies, says, you know, they couldn't sleep at night, sleepless, has nothing to corroborate it, right? That's considered garden variety. The general standard for a garden variety emotional distress claim is between 30000 and 125000 so garden variety is the first level, entry level. That's when the evidence is limited to the testimony of the plaintiff between 30,000 and 125,000. You have the second level up. This is considered significant emotional distress. So significant is the second level up. And in this one, you see uh, a more substantial harm. This is, there may be some more offensive conduct. Um, this would be where 
it's supported by some documentary evidence. So let's say, you know, you say you went to a doctor, a, um, a psychologist or something, right, to go talk about your problems from all your work-related stress. This would fall into that category. But we have just some other corroborating evidence, maybe not a psychologist, maybe you just went to a regular counselor, you know, or maybe, you know, you paid some kind of professional, you went to a free media, you went to a free service to say, to discuss uh, your particular situation. So that would be considered significant um, with some kind of corroborative evidence, if you have it, I mean, that's going to be better. Uh, that's usually between 50,000 and 200,000, right? So between 50,000 and 200,000. So before we move forward, though, do notice the overlap, right? So the overlap in the first category is between, is between 30,000 and 125, and then you see a 50,000 and then a 200,000. So what does that tell you? That tells you that a majority of those cases likely fall within that area, right? So because you have the substantial overlap and there's a lot of flexibility. So keep that in mind, right? So generally speaking, if you're assessing, if you're assessing your damages and you're trying to assess economic, um, excuse me, non-economic compensatory damages, you, you know, you kind of want to go on with the mindset between maybe 30 and 200. The cap on Title Seven is 300,000. That's the cap. They could award other, they could award higher, it's at the discretion, but the cap on Title Seven is 300,000. A lot of times Title Seven, which is a federal statute, would be in conjunction with a state statute, say, for instance, the New York State Executive Law, which doesn't have a cap. OK, so just keep that in mind. Um, then you have level three. This is known as egregious emotional distress. Um, this is when it's considered uh, what's known as outrageous and shocking behavior. Right. Uh, shocks the conscious is a very big term. Um, and this is when it has a significant impact on the plaintiff. Plaintiff has a legitimate medical problem afterwards or, you know, has a mental breakdown and it's, you know, it's exhibited, it's able, you're able to show it, you have all the documentary evidence, you have all the testimony, you know, and one particular case that I'm thinking about, um, you know, a lady in that case was basically molested multiple times by uh, an employer. So in that situation, that's considered obviously shocking conduct, right? Now, I want to be clear with everybody because everyone is going to say, well, you, vaccine litigation. I'm, I, by everyone, I'm talking about people complaining about vaccine litigation. It is not shocking to the conscious that they're requiring you to get vaccinated. Do not make that argument. You will not win this argument. It is not shocking to the conscious, okay? That's a very, uh, you know, the city has upheld on numerous occasions that they can require these kind of things. Um, and they've been very flexible with COVID. So I, I do not make that argument. That is a losing argument, okay? So it's not shocking to the conscious. But to finish it off, um, level three is egregious emotional distress. This is considered outrageous or shocking, may have a significant impact on the plaintiff. This is going, the category here is going to generally be between 200,000 and 1 million. In the case I'm talking about, I've seen 1.32 million. I think that was... Um, what was discussed in her in that lady's situation who was molested i think on two separate occasions or whatever but generally it's between two hundred thousand and one million what does that also tell you that also tells you that this that case wasn't limited to title seven it likely also had a state component maybe the new york state executive law maybe the new jersey law against discrimination or something to that effect so those are your three categories of emotional distress. To recap, it's the first level, garden variety, between 30,000 and 125,000. Second level, significant, between 50,000 and 200,000. Third level, your egregious emotional distress, between 200,000 and 1 million. It can go higher. It's at the discretion of the court. It depends usually on the facts and circumstances. Um, you know, the, the more shocking to the conscious it is, the more you get up there. Title VII has a cap of 300,000. And, you know, state... State law doesn't typically have the cap. So that's why you see a lot of state law claims in that. And um, that's really all I wanted to discuss because this is coming up a lot lately because, you know, there's a big, you know, what, what's happening here lately. It's, I mean, you know, people get caught up. People get, people latch on to keywords, right? So they latch on to words like it's shocking and egregious. And, you know, the this is done intentionally in the law, right? So keep in mind, so... What you have to do in order to determine what what qualifies um, as shocking, what qualifies as egregious or whatever the case, right? You look at the cases, you look at similar behavior in the cases and what went to trial and what has been determined by a jury. 
And that's, so if a jerk, so like that, you know, I'm using my case, an example that I'm working on here, which had, you know, the, the lady that was molested on multiple occasions, that's obviously, it's a terrible situation, but that's a situation where you'd be eligible for um, egregious emotional distress and the higher end of damages, you know? So let's say if you are an employee and you suffered a similar, again, terrible situation, you suffered a similar situation from your employer like this, that is the case you would refer to and to make your argument why you should be eligible for those damages, why you should be treated uh, similar to that. So um, so I hope this was helpful. This has been Compensatory Damages 101, your guide to emotional distress. Compensatory Damages 101, your guide to emotional distress. This is Vinny Malay with Maletti Law, the founder, partner, Mac Daddy, God King, everything of Maletti Law. And um, you know, as always, I wish you all lots of luck, love, Lots of love, lifts, and law here at Maletti Law. If you need us, you know where we are. You can leave a message below. You can send us an email. You can go to the website. You can go to the Facebook page. You can go to Instagram. We're all over the place. We don't hide. So have a wonderful day, and we're more than happy to help. Hope this was helpful.